Hello everyone, welcome back to Spectrum Glasses. This video is in continuation with my previous video in which we have done the potentiometric titration of oxalic acid versus NaOH and where we have measured the strength of the oxalic acid by potentiometric titration. And here in this video, we are just going to discuss how to calculate the pKa1 value and pKa2 value for this oxalic acid because it is a diprotic acid, it has two dissociable protons. So for that, we are going to calculate the pKa1 and pKa2 values. We have already discussed the lab activity and all. And now here, I am just going to show you how to calculate the pKa1 and pKa2 values for this oxalic acid. Previously, we have also discussed this is diprotic acid and how it is diprotic acid. This is the formula of the oxalic acid and in this formula, it is having two protons and these two protons, it can dissociate. So on dissociation of first proton, we are having this type of structure COO minus and COOH plus H plus, right? So if you started with the neutral compound you will end up with the neutral species right so here one is negative and the other one is positive so ultimately we get the neutral species on the right hand side also since it dissociates only one proton therefore this is known as its first dissociation constant because this is in equilibrium half of the species is undissociated and some of the species is dissociated so these two species are undissociated and dissociated are in equilibrium and since one proton is first dissociated so now you may have a question you have considered this this as a first proton and this as a second proton that is all your choice you can consider either of the proton as first proton right since it dissociated first H plus ion, so here this is known as its first dissociation constant. And the value reported for this first dissociation constant is 1.28. Similarly, in the second step, it dissociates this species going to there. And from here, the second proton will be removed, right? And that is again in equilibrium. Some of the species is half dissociated and some of the dissociated right and this step is termed as its second dissociation step and for this the pKa2 value will be calculated and for this pKa2 value reported in the literature is 4.27 now I am just showing you how to calculate these values from the readings which we have recorded in for 20 ml of oxalic acid and here are the p volume and here is the pH value and from here I have calculated delta pH, delta V, V average and delta pH upon delta V. This is for derivative. And here are the volume and pH readings are written. Fine. So from here I have drawn the graph and the graph is like this. So here in this case I have two inflection points. First is this. Here you can see. And the second is this which is very steep. Right. For this, we have drawn the derivative graph also just to easily locate the inflection point. So here is the inflection point and at this moment, the value is 19.95 and uh, here the del delta value, delta pH upon delta V is 31.5, right? So this is our second inflection point and first inflection point is somewhere here, which is very difficult to identify. So the other uh, alternative way to identify the inflection point is here. So you just go through this pH, delta pH upon delta V values. And from here, you just see here, you just see point 0.18 and it increases, increases and here we are having 0.36 value and after that it starts decreasing. So this is our second inflection point and at this moment we can record the volume. Similarly, we can measure the second inflection point which is, which is seen prominently in the graph. So the value is 19.9 at this moment. Fine. So this is how we can measure the inflection points first and second. So here I am just showing you what does this inflection point mean? So this is our first inflection point and this is our second inflection point and how to determine these inflection points. Actually, we draw these tangential lines and we uh, again draw the vertical line which passes through this steep graph, right? So it covers maximum part of this steep graph. And here you can see the height of this graph. You can take the point, say this is our point A 
and this is our point B and take the difference of these points and divided it by 2 and on divided by 2 you will get somewhere here so the value will be like this right somewhere here similarly you draw the line somewhere here like this and take the value half of this and you will get you will be here somewhere here so this is our first inflection point and this is our second inflection point so here i'm just showing you uh, here so the first inflection point is this and the second is this much right so these are our first and second equivalence point now the question comes what is our equivalence points in the previous case i have shown you that this cooh on reaction with naoh it gives us coo minus and cooh why plus h plus so the moment when the OH minus ion completely replace one of the proton that is called equivalence point. So here what I get, I get this 10.5 is my first equivalence point. If I divided it by 2, then I will get the volume value at this much, right? Now I am going to add my NOH here in continuation and the moment when this OH minus ion is exactly equal to this H plus ion that is our second equivalence point, right? So I hope you understand the first and second equivalence point. Now from these equivalence point, how we are going to measure our pKa1 and pKa2? So to determine our pKa1 and pKa2, we need to first calculate Okay, the second point in which you may have confusion, if this is 19.9 divided by 2, then how you are going to get 15.2? So this is actually on the difference between the first and the second equivalence point here, this. So take the value at this point, this point divided it by 2. So where you will be, you will be somewhere here. So how we are going to calculate, do the calculation, so 19.9 minus 10.5, I will get this much divided it by 2. So either I will just subtract it from 19.9 or I will just add this into 10.5 lower limit or subtract from the upper limit. So I simply add this and I will get this 14.7. So this is how we are just going to calculate the half of the equivalence point. Now the question comes, why this half of the equivalence point? So here I am just showing you again, what is does this mean half of the equivalence point? If at this point, our COOH is exactly equal to COO minus COOH at this point, fine. If I will consider this reaction somewhere here, so what will be the situation at this point? So at this point, the situation will be like this. COOH, COOH is in equilibrium with COO minus COOH and at this point, both are in half of concentration. At this point, this is completely converted to this one. If I take half of this first equivalence point, what will be the situation? Half of the H remains there and half of the salt is formed at half of the first equivalence point. This is my Henderson equation. So at this moment, if the concentration of salt is exactly equal to concentration of acid, then these two values will be cancelled out this will be cancelled out by this so we will get log base 10 on 1 and this can be written as log base 10 10 on 0 will we get 0 into 1 and then 0 0 this will go to this side and we will get this one so 0 into 1 we will get this 0 so if i will get this kind of situation then what will be there ph is equal to pka so this if I am taking the first equivalence point, so first equal this will be equal to my at this pH value I will get the pKa1 and similarly I will take half of the second equivalence point, half of this second equivalence point means at that moment I am just having this 
COOH is in equilibrium COO minus and COO minus. So half of OH this H plus is undissociated and half of the salt is present over there. And similarly if both are in same concentration half half then again we will cancel out these two species from the Henderson equation and we will get pH is equal to at this second equivalence point pH is equal to pKa2. So this is the easiest way. Now here I will just show you these are the values which I experimentally calculated and these are the reported values for pKa1 and pKa2. Now I am showing you in the excel sheet. So here in the excel sheet uh, this is my pKa2 15 at 15.25 and at this moment I am having the value of 3.72 right and in the case of first half of this first equivalence point will be where 5.25 and at this moment I am having the pH value at this 1.5 so this is my pKa1 because this is half of the first dissociation and this is my second pKa here pk is second so this is my second dissociation constant so from the previous case previous experiment i will get the values like this and from this this experiment i'll get the values like this and the first dissociation constant uh, is very consistent in my case and uh, this is literally away from the reported values but i hope you understand how to calculate the pka1 and pka2 values from the potentiometric titration if you guys find this video helpful please like share and subscribe thank you all thanks for watching